Hello there, kids. It is I, Stray Cat, the one and only, coming to you with another episode of Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Alrighty, when we left off, we were trying to do this little segment after leaving the Leviathan, and then the game broke. So, here's hoping this time it doesn't break. <laughs> but, other than that, just redoing all of this again. Oh boy, I missed all of them, because I'm trying to adjust my headset on the fly, too. There we go, got you. There we go. Whoop. You little shits. I'm also trying to do it one-handed, which does not bother. Do I really need to have the other hand on the controller? Not really, I can control it just fine with one. It just adds a stability to it, you know what I mean? <laughs> what? Why did I just say that? Oh boy. I was actually just having a conversation with a coworker about the fact I used to suppress saying that phrase. Oh, you little shit. There we go. We got it. I used to suppress saying that phrase because I used to say it all the freaking time. And away we go. I'm not going to try and skip anything this time, just in case. And there we go. Where is Bastila? What happened on that ship? We ran into Malak. He would have killed us, but Bastila sacrificed herself so we could get away. You mean she's... she's dead? Bah, Malak won't kill her. Don't be foolish. He'll want to use her battle meditation against the Republic. Turn her to the dark side and the Sith will always be victorious. True, um, but uh, at the same time, unless we find the Star Forge, we're not gonna be able to help her. Not so fast. We've got a bigger issue to deal with here. Oh yeah. They deserve to know the truth about you. Do you oh, want to tell them boy. what Malik said, or should I? Yeah, of course they're going to make this a sticking point, aren't you, Karth? You just have to make everything just the most annoying, drawn-out problem, don't you? <sighs> well, that last option is definitely dark side. Uh, I'll tell them. I'm Darth Revan. Revan? What, what are you talking about? Is this some kind of a joke? No, it's no joke. The Jedi Council captured Revan and erased the Dark Lord's mind, programming in a new identity. Saul Karath told me on the Leviathan, and Bastila confirmed it. You're Darth Revan? This is... This is big. Yeah. Do you, do you remember anything about being the Dark Lord? Small, strange dreams and visions. That's really about it. Just a few flashes. That's it. Nothing more? Then I don't think there's a problem. Well, there we go. It seems to me that if you don't really remember anything about being Revan, then it doesn't really matter anymore. You are who you are now, right? Of course it still yeah. matters. How do we know more memories won't come flooding back? How do we know Revan won't suddenly turn on us? Oh, come on, Karth. We've chasing after Malak. We've had his old Sith master right at our side, listening to our secrets, hearing our plans. <sighs> Karth, you are such a whiny bitch. Oh, my God. Ah. <sighs> Okay. Well, I'm trying to figure out the option that I mo most prefer here. I, th I think I'm going to go with this. I'm not Dark Lord anymore. I'm Theron Khan. I'm one of you. I don't see the Sith Lord standing here. I see a friend who's been with us through thick and thin. Remember, Malik's the one who tried to destroy Terrace. True. <laughs> I agree with mission. I swore a life debt to the person you are, not the person you were. Big Z and I will stick by you. We owe you our lives. We won't desert you now. 
I do appreciate that. Mission. The Sith bombed my homeworld, Revan took away my family, and destroyed my life. Everyone knows it was Malak who gave the order to attack your people, Karth. You can't blame Revan for that. I suppose you've proven yourself to be a friend of the Republic by your actions so far, Revan. But can I trust you? Can any of us? What about you, Jolie? What about me? I already knew who you were, though it wasn't my place to tell you. Better off that you know, if you ask me. Does it change anything? I'm not here to judge you. You do what you have to do, and I'll help if I can. Fair enough. What? What about you, HK? Commentary. I am experiencing something unusual, Master. Mm-hmm. What's happening? Answer. My programming is activating my deleted memory core. I believe I have a, a homing system that is restoring it, Master. So is this the stimuli you were waiting for? Explanation. I believe so, Master. I was unaware of my homing system until it had been activated. It seems that the homing system deliberately restores my deleted mm. memory core upon... upon returning to my original Master. And your original Master was Revan. Affirmation. Correct, Master. Sith protocols maintain that all droid knowledge be deleted before assassination missions and restored upon return. I have returned to you, and my full functionality is now under your personal command. It is a distinct pleasure to see you again, Master. Not exactly Revan anymore, HK-47. Observation. That does not matter, Master. I am your droid, regardless of your actions or personality. Wow. What are the chances of that happening? Remember, Slim we're talking about the Force here. At this point, Malak himself could drop out of the sky and I wouldn't bat an eyelash. Good point. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. What do you think, Candrus? You defeated the Mandalore clans in the war, Revan. You were the only one in the galaxy who could best us. We had never met one like you before, and never since. How can you even ask if I'll follow you? Whatever you're fighting, it will be worthy of my skill. I'm your man until the end, Revan. No matter how this plays out. Fair enough. You won't abandon me, will you, T3? I knew the little guy would come through for you. Droids don't hold grudges. Well. <laughs> even though, uh... We didn't understand a word that T3 said. I mean, I guess that kind of is confirmation right there. Well, Karth. It's pretty much everyone else here on my side. Well, how about you? Well, the others seem to trust you. And I don't see any other way that we can stop the Sith. And I suppose that Malak is the real enemy here. I really don't have any other choice, do I? No, you don't. I'm not Revan anymore, Karth. You have to believe that. I want to believe you. Proven yourself time and time again during our mission, but this is a little much for me to wrap my mind around. I bet. How do you think I feel? This must be even more of a shock to you. I don't know how you even keep going. I guess we both just have to find a way to push forward. Don't worry. I won't let my personal feelings get in the way of my assignments or this mission. But don't forget, I've sworn an oath to defend the Republic. As long as this mission stays on course, I'll stick with you. But I won't let you betray the Republic under any circumstances. So I guess that's Fair it. enough. We keep going. We've still got one more star map to uncover if we're going to find that star forge and save Basila. So let's do it before it's too late. Well, there we go. I guess that's decided then. Oh no, Bastila is a ghost now. Oh, okay. All right. Anyway. Welp. Big reveal done. Everyone knows I am now the big bad turned big good. We Okay. Let's uh, go around and talk to everyone now that the big reveal has been done. How can you possibly be Raven? The one. The Jedi whose troops saved me on Taras. It was Raven leading his army out to defeat the Mandalorians. It was you. 
I knew when I heard that you had become the Dark Lord of the Sith, that something was wrong with it. The man who saved me could never go completely to the dark side. I don't know who that Revan was. I'm not him. It is good to know that you have truly changed. It gives me hope. I do not think now that I will fall to the dark side. I only have to look at you and follow by your example. And there is no way I can fail. You will do fine, Jahani. Thank you for placing your confidence in me. I only wish I had your heart as well. I will never forget what you did for me, even if you do not remember it. Well, there goes that. Does that finish? No. Jahani has taken the news of your past rather well. She believes that the good in you, she knew as Revan, could never be fully extinguished. You should not abuse her trust in you. No, you should not. Unless you were a real evil bastard. And then... And that's all the more sweeter of a betrayal. Wow. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. All right. Hey there. What can I do for you? Uh, I wanted to talk about me being Revan. It seems to me that if you don't really remember anything about being Revan, then it doesn't really matter anymore. You are who you are now, right? True. So it doesn't bother you at all. I don't see the Sith Lord standing here. I see a friend who's been with us through thick and thin. Remember, Malik's the one who tried to destroy Terrace. Big Z and I will True. stick by you. We owe you our lives. We won't desert you now. I don't know why that broke off, but hey, it works. Ooh. I apologize. That was a big old yawn. <laughs> okay. All right, Candorus, let's talk to you again. Yeah, what do you want? Uh, tell me more about the Mandalorian Wars. The war we had with the Republic was supposed to be the most glorious battle in our history. But it was a very costly one. I guess we didn't think of how much we could lose in it. How much did you lose? There weren't many of us after that last battle. Mandalore himself was killed at the hands of the Jedi Revan. The best of us could not defeat him. After that last battle, those of us that survived were stripped of our weapons, our armor, and our basilisks. The Republic's forces destroyed them while we were forced to watch. Those who hadn't fled earlier were left with nothing to call their own. No weapons, no armor. Only the honor of having fought in the battle we just lost. For many, this was not enough. While the rest of us were sent into exile on the Outer Rim, they tried to relive the old days, raiding worlds. They're nothing more than bandits now. And then you eventually came to Taurus. Yeah, I came to Taurus. And forcing for Davik was not stimulating. The gangs on Taurus and Davik's rivals were trash. They give no thrill in battle, no honor or glory in defeating them. It was like stepping on bugs. I sought worthy challenges, but the best that Terrace could offer were nothing to me. But I think now, with you, I may finally find opponents worth fighting. Opponents who could easily kill us. Maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't. Either way, I think that by following you, I can get something out of it. Maybe later I'll tell you more about what it was like to work for Davik. For now, though... We should get on with our lives. Is there something else you want to know? Eh, nothing more for now. Your choice. I'm here if you want something done right. Fair enough. Candrus told Revan and told how Revan and his forces destroyed the Mandalorian's weaponry and exiled them, scattering them across the outer rim. He thinks that now with you he might find worthy opponents once again. I'll try talking to him later. Okay. HK-47. HK-47 is ready to serve, Master. So, you belong to Revan, originally. Statement. Yes, Master. You created me shortly after you and your apprentice began your war to conquer the galaxy. I was sent on an assassination mission into Mandalorian space, but I was damaged and unable to return to you. Exclamation. Mm. I find this most distressing. I could certainly have protected you from the Jedi and your pupil's betrayal had I returned. 
It's probably better it worked out this way. Observation. You may be right, Master. This way we are reunited, and neither of us has suffered permanent termination. Am I very much like the revenue knew? I'm assuming not. But... Observation. You are different in many fundamental ways, Master. You have a concern for life that is unsettling. <clears throat> this cannot solely be caused by memory loss. I do not know how to explain it. Regardless, you do seem to be improved overall from the human I once knew. Do you know anything about the Starforge? Answer. No, Master. You never did make me privy to any of the Starforge's secrets. Mm hmm Fair enough. So, why the meat bag references? Answer. It was you who programmed me thus, Master. Your pupil once asked me what I thought of him, and I informed him of his meatbag status. He was unimpressed, but you found the reference humorous. <laughs> you changed my programming That's so that fair. I could continue to use the term. It drove your pupil to extreme lengths of frustration. <laughs> so Malik was the original meatbag. I like that idea. Observation. Of course you do, Master. You did then as well. <laughs> What can you tell me of Malik? Commentary. Your former pupil is efficient and brutal, even for an organic. I rather liked him when you first introduced me to him. If I had known what he would do to you, Master, I would have gladly removed his entrails right then. I, um... Moving on. <laughs> That'll be all, thank you. As you desire, Master. Signing off. Alrighty. Well, that was interesting. Zalbar. Is there something you want? Uh, how do you feel about me being Revan? You rescued me from the Gamory enslavers. It does not matter to me if you were called Farron Khan or Revan. I have sworn a life debt to you. I will stay with you to the end, Farron Khan. And I will judge you on your actions as I see them. Not on a history I have never known. Rather bold. Thank you. Alright, T3. I don't think I'll get any meaningful... <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'll get anything meaningful out of T3. Never mind. Okay. So I've talked to Mission, Candorous, HK, Zalbar, Jahani... Joe Lee, though, I don't think I've talked to him about the whole development. I was about to say, I don't think there's anyone in here. Not yet. Not in this timeline. Joe Lee. Got something on your mind, do you? A bit. What do you know about the Sith? Bad, bad men. Women, too, to be fair. Well, yeah. You must know more than that. Oh, indeed. They make a fine sandwich also. <laughs> but don't tell the Jedi Council I said that. <laughs> okay. Bad people, but they make a fine sandwich? <laughs> okay. Alright. Do you have anything important about the Sith, or no? No. And just what gave you the impression that I know anything more about the Sith than you do? You did. Y you, you did. You said you fought them. Oh, that's right. Damn the years of the young. <laughs> I was expecting you to be your usual inattentive self when I mentioned that. Wow. Oh, so it's true. Yes. Rude. I fought plenty of Sith. And that was during the time of Exar Kun. Oh, 40 years ago now. Has it been that long? Yep, you're that old, old man. Uh, I, I, I say it that way, even though I find myself in those situations now constantly. <laughs> Has it really been ten years? Oh, dear God. <laughs> Save me now. I am dying. <sighs> uh, are these Sith the same as the ones who followed me? No, no, of course not. The Sith have come and gone for ages. They were not called the Sith many thousands of years ago, perhaps. But the dark side was always present, without a doubt. Oh, sure, occasionally the light side comes close to vanquishing the dark. But 
the dark always returns. The fact that Exar Kun was defeated didn't mean the Sith would never return, as they obviously have now. Everyone knows that. So who is this Exar Kun? Uh, Exar was a Jedi who was corrupted by ghosts of the old Sith, or so they say. He attempted to conquer the Republic and create a new golden age of the Sith. Sort of like Revan. I mean, me. Uh, I assume he was killed? Better to say he was defeated, but essentially, yes. The victory uh. did not come easily, however. Are these the same Sith we're fighting now? No, no, of course not. The Sith have come and gone for ages. Uh, okay. Oh, sure. The fact that Fair enough. We've already gone through all of that. So, tell me what you know about them. A Sith believes he commands the Force, but it is the dark side who commands him. You know this. There is little else I could truly add. So, what happened during the war with Exar Kun, then? That is not a pleasant time to remember. After Exar Kun fell to the dark side, he attempted to recruit other Jedi to his cause. What surprised us, what took us completely unprepared, was how utterly successful he was. Many Jedi joined him and became Sith themselves. Why they did, I... I will never truly know, but they did. Battle broke out throughout the Order, pupil against the Master. We fought ourselves. Exterminated all the traitors. That is not the phrase to be using. That must have been difficult. Yes, more than difficult. Next to impossible. Mm-hmm. How do you fight against someone you love? <laughs> I dislike such memories. It leaves a taste in the mouth that... Uh, it is a sadness I thought I'd put aside long ago. Ask me about the war some other time, just not now. I would prefer to be by myself for now. A lot more stories that I can get out of Jolie. Fair enough. Alright, well, now we move on. And I guess the last person we should talk to is Karth. What do you need? Do you want to talk? Talk about what? The only thing I want to do right now is find Dustal. If he's alive, th there's just nothing else I want to think about. I'll understand if we can't look for him right now, but if we could, it would be a huge load off my mind. Alright, fair enough. Well, I mean, we're already at Yavin, so finish up with Yavin and then I'll go to uh, whoop -a -doop -a -doo. go on to Korriban which is the last one we need to go to and we're at Yavin because there's things that will happen here I should take you and yeah Jolie too Alrighty. We go all the way back. Uh-oh. This can't be good. Uh Savam, you 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 having trouble here? Your uh your guests look very sharp and intimidating. And murdery. You need help. <laughs> That's not good enough, Savam. We know you have more, and we want it now. What? You just. You can't just rewrite our agreement whenever you feel like it. The exchange won't stand for it. The exchange is in no position to dictate orders anymore, Savam. Who's that? A stranger, you haven't been telling us everything, now have you, Savam? Tell you everything? What are you talking about? I don't have to clear everything through you. Um. Whoa. <laughs> that one option, if you're gonna blast him, at least cut me in on something. Good God. I ain't gonna say I represent the exchange. Jesus. What's going on here, Savam? 
They're trying to extort me, that's what. They think that just because the exchange is gone, they can take whatever they want from me. We are renegotiating our contract, Savam. Uh, I think you guys better leave. Or what? You'll force us? Or I will ask you again, very politely. You seek to mock us, human? No, no, don't fight in here. You'll destroy everything. We'll be back for you, human. And you as well, Savam. Why the Transoceans don't have audio, I don't understand. Thank you for trying to help, but I don't think this ended well at all. They can be impulsive sometimes. They may be back in force. Still, at least I ended up all, all in one piece, right? Well, yeah, that's true. You did. What do you want? Uh, anything you'd be willing to sell me? Here, have a look. Environmental Bastion Armor. Wow. Full immunity to cold fire and sonic. And is a decent armor to boot. They have the light exoskeleton, the heavy exoskeleton. Which is also still medium armor at that point. Adds to constitution strength and is upgradable. Jeez. Baraguin Assault Blade. That's a hell of a name. Does quite a bit of damage in both physical and energy. Interesting. Advanced Vibro Sword is a miracle of miniaturization technology. Not only does it deliver increased functionality over a normal Vibro Sword, it also has capacitors which which discharge upon contact with a target. Target? Target. Don't know why I wanted to say target for whatever fucking reason I was doing that for. Extra space within the blade can be utilized by a variety of common upgrade modules. That's pretty cool. Bar Baragwin assault gun. Heavy weapons, and it is upgradable. Interesting. This light repeating blaster is an excellent example of the Baragwin aptitude for weaponry. By taking and modifying an existing repeating blaster design, the Baragwin have managed to greatly increase the damage output and added additional functionality with a variety of weapon upgrades. And then the Ion X weapon. Wow. In all that time, he's just gotten cooler and cooler stuff. <laughs> wow, that's cool. So I, I kind of want some of them. I, I might be leaving with at least one of them. <laughs> this weapon is an experimental Baraguin design that has been extensively modified by Suvam Tan. He has incorporated what he describes as a shaped energy delivery system into the weapon, which allows it to deliver concussive force on impact in addition to the weapon's normal energy discharge. I can barely say some words today, and I don't know why. Upgrades to the weapon could potentially greatly increase both its impact force and its penetration. Fair enough. Advanced Biostabilizer Mask. That was another yawn. I apologize. Hmm. Don't know what's up with me today. But this apparently gives immunity to mind affecting poison and additional plus one to all saves. But it's light armor. Hmm, that limits who can you actually use it. Advanced stabilizer gloves. That's pretty good. Advanced Combat Implant. Wow. That's pretty strong. As a very strong implant. Has a lot of things it adds, but it requires implant level 3. So, explains that. 
advanced sensory implant requiring level three awareness and plus two dexterity. Wow. There's the biostabilizer plant that, or rather implant that does the same thing as the mask, but just doesn't add to saves. Composite heavy plating for droids class three. 13 point defense bonus. This plating foregoes mobility in favor of sheer mass. The huge composite plates covering the droid do not allow the range of motion that other armor systems may grant their user, but in terms of physical protection, this plating is the best in the galaxy. Well, that's an idea. Baragwin Droid Shield Unlimited, huh? Super efficient version of a normal droid energy shield. The Baragwin version has been modified and customized to be able to run off the power supply of the droid mounting it. While the energy drain on the droid is insignificant, the protection gained is equal, if not superior, to a normal light droid energy shield. Well, there you go. That would be pretty damn good. Huh. It's a lot of good stuff here. So what armor do I currently have on Farrakhan is the question. Uh, Darth Bandon, which was light. Has a max dexterity bonus plus five. Hmm. I mean, I do have the money to do the thing, so I might as well buy one of them. Hmm. About heavy exoskeleton. Added to constitution and strength. Which... I forgot what my current armor does. My current armor does resist against fire and mind affecting. Okay, I, I don't need the mind affecting all that badly. Huh, at least I don't think so. In fact, the uh, immunity to fire isn't really all that necessary either. Uh, hmm. Hmm, I don't need the shadow armor, so let's go with the heavy exoskeleton. Yeah, I know it's more than 900 credits. It's literally 20,000. I understand. Okay. Well. Durasteel heavy armor. I forgot that I had that. <laughs> heavy exoskeleton. There we go. And I'll just need to pull the stuff off of the old armor and put it onto this one. Oh, that is a cool look as well. That's pretty snazzy. That's pretty snazzy. All right. <laughs> okay, that's pretty cool. All right, time to get out of here. Get back onto the ship. To play around with uh, customizing this armor, I guess. Because there's nothing else in his uh, list that I particularly want right now. At least not for me. Uh, I just remembered the workbench is in here. Cool. There we go. All right, uh, which one was the, yes, it was this. 
That's where the immunity of mind affecting came from. Okay. Let's see what I get if I add them to this. Adds to the attribute bonus and adds to the defense bonus. All right. It makes it plus three and plus three instead of plus one and plus two. Okay. All right. The immunity of mind affecting isn't too necessary. Uh, will and awareness. Is there anything? I was just thinking if there's a way I can avoid the issue of... Yeah. Well, this definitely helps with mind affecting. It just means I lose the immunity to critical hits. But still, I'm fine with that. Perfectly fine with that, especially with what I gain in strength and constitution. Makes up for it. By a significant margin. I uh, just want to make sure. Nothing particularly stronger. Okay, we're good. We are good. Okay. And with that, we shall leave and head to Korriban. If I eventually get on the right planet. There we go. Better. Alrighty. And we'll let the FMV play out. Even the station we were just at. And away we go. And we have one last vision. in a tomb. Interesting. are landed and down and should probably head out with Karth as much as I don't want to it is his son that's here so all right Time to go. All right. Hello. Greetings, human. A word, if I may. It concerns the Dark Lord of the Sith. You mean Malak? No, human. I mean the true Lord of the Sith. I'm speaking of Darth Revan. Of you. How do you know who I am? Listen to me, and all will be made clear. 
My name is Ziakram. I am a... a businessman. I and my partner deal in rare items of extraordinary value and power. You're with the exchange. No, we are not. We are independent operators, though often our transactions involve those who represent the exchange. Traditionally, we have always done business with the owner of the Ebon Hawk, Davik Kang, most recently. Ahita Othar before him. Fori Haksar, Haksa before her. But we were reluctant to approach you. You had no ties to the exchange, which was a problem. Even worse, you were a Jedi, not the sort of person we normally associate with. Person, I should say. I just can't talk. Uh... So why are you approaching me now? Those were... There were reports of the Ebon Hawk traveling to many different planets. We wanted to know what you were up to. At your last port, I placed a small tracking device on your ship. The tracking device reportedly came back to us that you had been captured by the Leviathan. Once we had that information, we began digging into our other sources within the Sith fleet. Sources? What sources? There are millions of soldiers in the Sith fleet. Surely you aren't surprised that some of them will sell information. Even high-ranking officers aren't immune to the lure of easy credits. Your escapades on the Leviathan created quite a stir in the Sith fleet. Of course, Malak tried to suppress the truth about your identity. There were more than a few summary executions. But even if security footage is destroyed and witnesses silenced, some bits of information always slip through. Spend enough credits to gather the tiny pieces and the puzzle becomes clear. We know what happened on the Leviathan. At least, we know enough. You are Darth Revan, and you are going to kill Malak for daring to claim dominion over the Sith. I'm not in this for revenge. Maybe, maybe not. But whatever your motivation it may be, you do intend to stop Malak and his followers. Of that we are sure, and we want to help. My partner and I deal in very rare and powerful items. Weapons, armor, things you could use in your battles against Malak and the Sith. And you're just going to give these items to me. I don't carry these items with me, of course. They're with my partner, but they're yours if you've got the credits to buy them. We do want to make a profit on this, after all. Just go to the cantina here in Deshde. Dresh Day. Jesus. There's a roadie in there named Mika Dorin. Tell Mika that Ziagram sent you to look at the premium items. Okay, I guess I'll go check it out. Dresh Day. I nailed it that time. Mika already knows to expect you. Like I said, just tell him you want to look at the premium items. I guess my work here is done. Goodbye, Revan. And once Malak is beaten, don't forget who helped you to victory. Ah, they're trying to curry favor and influence by uh, being a little helpful now. I see what their game is. All right. Fair enough. Ah, I see, I see. Another Jedi come to small Korriban, yes? Good to meet you. Jedi come here often, huh? There are many people who come to Korriban from throughout Sith space, hoping to join the Academy. Some of them are Jedi who have left the Order. You will get into the Academy for certain. I understand Jedi who have left the light side are made very welcome. So I imagine... But enough about that. It is very nice to see that the Ebon Hawk has returned. I have not seen it, that ship for some time, indeed. Since you are regular to our little colony, the docking fee is only 25 credits. It's not really necessary, is it? I suppose there is no need to charge the owner of the Ebon Hawk any fee, really. I'll open the door for you. Fair enough. Enjoy your stay and dress die. Okay. Rest day. I keep goofing up the word. It's fine. It's fine. I'm just curious if there's anything I can interact with or open before I head out. There's a mechanic here. But that's about it. Okay. I'm gonna go back inside the ship and out of it. Because there should be a couple interactions that happen when I'm out here. At least there should be.
And... Eh, yeah, there's one. Oh boy, this guy. What the hell is your kind doing here? Bad enough I have to deal with all these other idiots, but now there's a stinking Cathar on this world. Oh, this I guy. I have as much right to be here as you do, sir. Just ignore him, Juhani. <laughs> yeah, do like the Jedi tells you and back off. Your people are pathetic. It's no wonder we crushed your world so easily. What? What do you know about my world? I know enough that... Hey, wait a minute. You look familiar somehow. What? You? Do you two know each other? This doesn't concern you, Jedi trash. Hmm. Now, where Boy? Could I have... No, he's dead and she likely is too. I... What are you talking about? Maybe I was wrong. Still, I think a specimen like you would be a nice addition to my collection. So, what would it take, Jedi, for you to sell your pet here to Okay, me? you have made several assumptions. Most of them make me want to stab you. First off, she is not a pet. Second off, she ain't property. And third off, you're a... <laughs> I'm probably going to have to cut that one out. <laughs> I'm probably going to have to cut out point three. The other two still stand. <laughs> Sir. She is her own person. Now don't be so selfish. We both know Cathair aren't real people anyway. Oh, I want to stab you just on that too. Pets. But the males uh, are excuse me? the animals they are. Wow. I remember one time on Taurus. What? What did you say? Calm down, Jihani. What did you do on Taris, you scum? Put one of you down like the animals you are. So easy. Then I saw one of the females on the auction block. <sighs> but those darn Jedi. It was you. What? Me? Oh, ho, ho. now I recognize where I've seen that face before. You were the little Cathair I was going to purchase. But those Jedi came and stole my pet away from me. You were buying Cathar slaves. When I was fighting with the Mandalorians against the Cathar, I developed an appreciation for these creatures. They make excellent servants if properly trained. Can I cut him up? Can I kill him? Can I please kill him? Please let me kill him. Please let me kill him. Please let me kill him. I do about the lesser, non-human species. The Sith at least let their feelings show on the outside. I want to kill you. I want to kill you. World. Come now. Will you let your pet go? I'm sure we can come up with a price we both think is fair. If you say she is A, my pet, and B, act like she's property, again, I'm going to kill you. She is not for sale. And I will see you dead for what you have done to my people. Uh, hold on a second. D don't be hasty. There is no emotion. There is peace. I, I will remain calm. I am a Jedi now. My lust for vengeance must be curbed. Yes, yes. Say no to the dark side, but I will have you yet. Ha! I am going to contrive a reason for me to kill you. There are plenty of reasons already, but I will find a reason that is justifiable to kill you. Okay. Well, that's a way to end the episode. Okay, so, time to do the ending. Well. Hmm. Boy. Oh, boy. Anywho. Time to end. 
Thank you all so much for watching. Click the subscribe button if you like these videos and you want to see more. And click the like button if you like this particular video. And share in comments. It will bring more people into this community. We can talk about the games we're playing together. And I will see you all in the next episode. This has been the one the only Stray Cat playing games. And finally on Korriban, after the big reveal of who we are, we are being Revan. And slowly but surely going to complete the other companion quests here because this is really the last chance we get a chance to do that and uh jihani's gonna get revenge on that guy at some point as am i because that guy is a raging asshole and boy do i want him dead for you